Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany as we continue to, to look at uh, our call to share our, our love of Christ with one another. Well, let us begin our worship this morning by first of all singing our opening hymn. God's light has come to reveal the way in this new year. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Arise, shine. God's light penetrates the darkness that covers the world. Arise, shine. Nations shall come to God's light and kings to the brightness of God's dawn. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. We also come before God confessing our sins. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgive the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, when I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the Kyrie.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We also turn to the Lutheran Confessions. And actually, we've been working through each Sunday the Augsburg Confession. It's one of the parts of the, the Book of Concord that we as Lutherans confess to. And uh, so today we look at the conclusion. Next week we'll start looking at another part of the Book of Concord, which is the large, Martin Luther's large catechism versus the small catechism. Well, we look at the conclusion. This was done in order that it may be understood that nothing has been accepted among us in teaching or ceremonies that is contrary to scripture or the small c Catholic Church. For it is manifest that we have most diligently been on guard so that no new or ungodly doctrine creeps into our churches. In accordance with the edict of your imperial majesty, we have desired to present the above mentioned articles. They exhibit our confession and contain a summary of the instruction of our teachers. If anything is found to be lacking in this confession, we are ready, God willing, to present more extensive information according to the scriptures. In fact, uh, more um, information was asked for, and so they wrote what was called the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Made it sound like they were sorry that they wrote it, but it was a use of that term back then that meant, this is what I mean, this is what we, we mean by saying this, and it just further expanded the Augsburg Confession. Well, let us uh, now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hear from God's word. The Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, through chapter 13, verse 13. And I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, 
but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the, the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 4, verse 31 through 44. And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed, and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose, and left the synagogue, and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her, and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose, and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This morning we're going to talk about something that Jesus said in our gospel reading. But first I want to ask you, if you go to the grocery store, are you there to get a checkup by the doctor? No, of course not. You're there to buy groceries. Or if you go to the park, are you there to do your homework? No, you're there to swing on the swings. Well, Jesus said that he was here on earth to do something. He told us what it was he was here to do. He said he was here to preach the good news. Now, everywhere he went, he told stories about lost coins and, and prodigal sons, and he healed people from blindness, he restored. And it was all about people being lost or about people being needing healing. And Jesus did all of that to show what he was here for, to preach the good news, the good news of healing and being found. See, Jesus wanted to to have a restored relationship with the Father. He doesn't want us to feel lost or broken. He doesn't want us to feel that shame of the wrong that we do, but he wants us to have a relationship with God. And that's the good news. He came to give that wholeness, to help find us. That's the good news. He's here to bring us to that relationship with God. That's why Jesus came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. God, sometimes we feel lost, like we don't know the purpose. 
Jesus, you came here to tell us the good news, that you came to find us, to bring us back, to restore us. God, help us to find our purpose in you. Thank you, Jesus, for your loving forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. text of the sermon today comes from our uh, epistle reading from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, which I read again. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. You may be a, a fan of the Beatles. I, I was growing up. It, it uh, was... Uh, um, about the, or, or, or growing up, uh, certainly was very popular. But back in the 1960s, the Beatles came out with a song that was called, All You Need Is Love.
love is all you need. I would suggest that the Beatles got that wrong. They got that wrong. They, they totally missed the point. Paul tells us what we need. He says, not only love, but faith and hope. It's tempting, though, to look at this verse and focus on love as, as uh, if faith and hope were not important. But just imagine, if you will, imagine a world without faith. Without faith, we would not understand love. We would not understand the love of Jesus. Faith is necessary before we even came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We know that we walk by faith and not by sight. That's a fact of life. None of us were there to see Jesus, to hear him, to touch him, to see him die and then to rise again from the grave. We hear it through faith, through the faithful writings of of the apostles. But we are also told in by Paul in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 that therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We might say that it is faith which is the vehicle which brings us to the love of God, or brings that love of God to us. Needing faith to grasp that love and the grace of God has, that it has been given. Therefore, all you need is faith and love, do to do to do. No, wait, there's three that remain. What about hope? What about hope? Without hope, we could not endure. We may have come to believe in the love of, of Jesus by faith, but we need hope to endure. Hope cannot be seen here as a, as a weak word. Often it is, you know, I hope it will rain today. It's, there's not a cloud in the sky and no forecast of it. You know, that's a, that's a weak hope. But the Greek word, is, is much more definitive. The Greek word alpese, it means joyful and confident expectation of eternal life. Imagine life without hope. Well, the Beatles wrote another song which began with the words, imagine there is no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today Imagine there is no countries. It isn't hard to do. I can guarantee they got that song wrong as well. If we imagine life without heaven, without the forgiveness of Christ, without, without the gift of life everlasting, we are hopeless. Paul said so when he said, when he said, if only uh, for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. All I need that is, is much more than just love. All I need is faith, hope, and love. No argument that the greatest of these three is love. Love is the fulfillment of the law, but this is never said of faith or hope. Love, not faith, or hope is what brought Jesus to the cross. Love finishes. Love completes. It crowns. It, uh, uh, it crowns our life in eternal blessedness. Love, after all, began with the plan of our salvation before the world ever, ever began. Love was what God had as he looked at naked Adam and Eve after they first realized they were naked. Love clothed them. Love gave them the promise of the Messiah. Even to Adam and Eve, they received that promise there in the garden. 
Love brought the people of Israel out of slavery. Love gave them the law through Moses. But at the same time, love recognized that the law could not save his people. And so the love promised and finally gave Jesus to the world to die for the sins of the people. Love used Jesus' blood to forgive our sins. And love broke the chains of death that first Easter morning. As I said, I am a fan of, of Beatles music and I've kind of picked on them, haven't I, this morning. Well, let me suggest a song where they got it right. We all live in a yellow submarine. It says, um, it, the words go, as we live a life of ease, every one of us has all we need. Sky of blue, sea of green, in our yellow submarine. Everyone, every one of us has all that we need. We have all we need for our salvation. We have our faith. We have our hope. We have his love. And we know that as living in a yellow submarine, we're not home until we're in heaven. We may live in that yellow submarine here, but heaven is our home. Well, allow me then to sum up what Paul was saying in the text. He said, faith goes forward to apprehend. Hope moves from there to anticipate. And love is what makes it all uh, possible as we recognize our sins are forgiven on the cross. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus. Amen. We come before God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Christ Jesus, you came to save all people. Forgive us when we chose to exclude those we think are unlovable or those we think don't want to hear your gospel message. Stop us from keeping the good news of your love to ourselves and help us to spread your words to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, O God of action and order, guided by your Holy Spirit and trusting your direction, we seek to carry out our congregation's mission through such things as boards and committees, organizations and agencies, groups and gatherings. We ask the blessing of your presence within each one of them that by our feeble efforts, you, your will may be accomplished among us to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the call process. O Lord, the true vine, during this time of transition, keep our congregation firmly connected to you. Help us to assess our needs 
and guide our decisions to call a pastor that has the gifts that will strengthen the work of your church in this place. Bless us, meanwhile, with patience and faith as we seek to see, serve you now and wait eagerly for you to send us that very specially chosen servant to lead us in our further ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. O God, the ruler of us all, since you desire that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, let your blessing rest on our civic leaders and all whom you have placed in positions of authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives, godly and respectable in every way, enabled thus to pray and work unhindered by anger or quarreling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who protect us, Glorious Lord, be with all who serve our country by keeping us safe. We pray for protection on all police officers, firemen, those in the military, and those in homeland defense, as well as those in the medical fields. Continue to bless them and their families as they serve us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. How quickly life can change, O oh God, when interrupted by accident or illness, how slowly drag the hours through days of long recovery. We pray that you would preserve those in this congregation who are in need of our prayers. We pray especially, dear Lord, for those who are healing from COVID. Gail Uglow, Tempe Brown, Libby Weigel, Barry Craner and his wife, Leonard Gray and Jeff Roberts, and Rose. We pray for those healing from cancer. Paul Anderson, George Mate. Sharon Hunter, Marty Williams, Emily Franks, Linda Mir Rosier, Marcella Jamelo, Betty Pickett, Stan Colby, Lori, Art Agu Aguilar, Brenda. We pray for those who are healing from other health issues. George Pickett, Lumney Park, Andrea Green, Lois Chip, John Scott, Kathy Williams, John Burtonshaw, Eunice Sterling, Scott Govert, Peco and Vince, Lori Parrish, Madeline, Madeline um, Barbara Nielsen's brother Jerry, Nick Copeland, Casey Covington, Susie Gilner, Joanne Covey, Bessie Franks, Gerald D. Meyerman, Cromer, uh, nine-year-old Hannah, Rebecca Graham, Ernie Louie, Rod Lenite, Len and Rose, and, T and Tom C. We pray for those healing from injury, for a Abby Geiser, and Janice Colby. Be present with all of them, we pray. Grant courage and hope and patience day by day, and skill to those whom you have sent to aid in their recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now go now as a light to the nations, honor the Lord, Preach what you know of the risen Christ and fulfill all righteousness. And may God strengthen you and bless you with peace. May Christ Jesus bring forth justice for you and among you. And may the Holy Spirit alight on you and affirm you as God's beloved ones. Amen. Understanding, trust the word of God. Find it on your head and in your heart. Bear with one another and remember to forgive. Trust the word of God. God our Father calls us to his kingdom full of light. Gentle shepherd, lead us through the night. Your plan for us and show us how to live. Love the Lord our God. Be humble, be kind, and trust the word of God. Compassion and patience, trust the word of God. Be not on your
another and remember to forgive just the word of God. God our Lord had called us to his kingdom full of life. Gentle shepherd, lead us with life. Please reveal your plan for us and show us how to live. Now I ask that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And have a great day in the Lord.